Hi, I'm Captain Steve. And you know, sometimes the system of buoys that are scattered across the waters gets a little confusing. Well, in this video, we dissect that system and make sense out of what seems to be senseless. By the time we're done, you'll have a better understanding of what the buoys are for and why they're where they are. Spoiler alert, it's a lot more than red right return. Now, this video is part of the Smart Boating Educational Series that I shot many years ago as part of a DVD boating course. So, yeah, I'm a lot younger in this video. I've sold them for years, but now it's free to you. All I ask is that you smash those like and subscribe buttons. So, for now, sit back and relax while we go over the system of buoys and nav aids. As you drive down the highway following a map, you'll find that you'll also have to follow road signs to get where you're going. Without the signs, you won't know what road is what, which exit is which. The map gives you the overview of your trip, the signs give you the specifics. The relationship works the other way too. The signs aren't much good without the map. Looking at a street sign does you little good without the map to see where the street goes. On the water, you have your nautical chart as the map and buoys and beacons, which we'll call navigational aids, or simply nav aids, as the street signs. Buoys will always be floating, and beacons will always be mounted, either on land, like on a small tower, or perhaps on a pole near some rocks. Just like you follow signs on the highway to get to your destination, so do you follow nav aids on the waterways. And just as the street sign is useless without the map, floating next to a buoy tells you little about your surroundings without referencing the buoy to your chart. Then you'll see that bell buoy number two is at the head of some inlet and you'll be able to tell which way to go to get to the next buoy. But you can't just have buoys scattered across the seascape. That would only get cluttered and confusing. There has to be some kind of system to allow for clarity and ease of use. So it was decided to have buoys divided into two basic categories, lateral and non-lateral. And we'll explain the difference in just a minute. Again though, keep in mind the term aids to navigation. They aid you, assuming that you are also consulting a marine chart to guide you on your trip. And one last thing before we get into specifics. You need to know that it's illegal to tie your boat to any nav aids. They could get dragged off station, or worse, someone navigating to them in the fog could see two targets on his radar when there should be one and figure that it can't be a buoy. So don't tie up to buoys, ever. Lateral aids are the ones which you cruise along to get you through a channel or marked sea lane. They mark the edge of the safe water or channel and you're instructed to keep them on one side of your boat or the other. They'll either be red or green, some will be lighted, some will not. All of the red ones should be passed on one side, green ones will be on the other. But which side? Well, you can't just say keep all the red ones to your right, now can we? What if you turn around? Suddenly you're on the wrong side of the same buoy and in trouble. So let's say keep the red ones to your right if you're cruising from a larger body of water to a smaller one. Well, that would certainly make sense and keep things tidy. Let's go one step further and say that if you are indeed cruising from a larger body of water into a smaller one, then you are considered to be returning. So when returning, keep the red buoys to your right. Red, right, returning. That's the phrase to remember all you need to know about the lateral system. Why is that all you need to know? Well, Super Captain, if the red buoys are to your right when returning, guess where the green ones go? Sure, to your left. Typically, you'll go in between the red and the green, but not always. Often you'll see just one buoy, and you'll know which side to pass it on. If it's red, keep it on your right when returning. Green ones, keep on your left when returning. Now, if you turn around, you're not returning anymore, and the red ones are then on your left side, and the green ones are on your right side. Very simple navigating, very smart boating. Now what if I'm not returning from a larger body of water to a smaller one? I'm just cruising through a large one to get somewhere else. Well, they thought of that too. The common sense solution was to keep the red ones toward the shore. So, if you are cruising through a body of water and are generally headed clockwise around the country, you are returning. You keep the red buoys to your right. Remember, if you're headed clockwise around the country, then you are considered to be returning. Now on some occasions, you may also see a buoy that is both red and green. This would be placed at the junction of two channels, much like a fork in the road. One direction will be the preferred channel, one will be the secondary channel. What's a secondary channel? Well, 
It could be one that may lead to a dead end, but there's a marina down there, something like that. For whatever reason, it's just not the main channel. This red and green buoy will have the colors separated horizontally. You pass it on either side, but the top color indicates the preferred channel. Be sure to look at your chart, as you may only be able to pass on either side going in one direction. There might be a wreck or shallow water just past this buoy at the fork in the road. A buoy with red on one half and white on the other is a mid-channel buoy. They have unobstructed water on all sides and mark the center of the channel, typically offshore a ways as you approach a harbor. If it's lighted, it flashes the identifier for the letter A in Morse code, dit da. For that reason alone, these buoys are sometimes referred to as Morse A buoys. You should treat these buoys as the center line of a highway and keep to the right of the buoy, and the vessel coming the other way will do the same, thus ensuring a safe passage.